Karen Mayhall, who was one of the leaders of the Bible study discipleship ministry called The Navigators, used to say, it's mind expanding to contemplate all the riches that God has in store for us when we open his word and when we seek him in our daily lives. She said, I don't want to be robbed of even one of God's riches that he has for me. By not taking time and not giving myself, opening myself to be invaded by God's grace and God's spirit in my life. She said, I don't want to miss anything that God has for me on a Monday, on a Tuesday. By not listening to what he's telling me, by allowing the routine and pressing matters of what's going on in my life to bankrupt me from the riches and the blessings that God was offering me that day and by extension in my life. I want to encourage each one of us to open ourselves to the richness of the blessings that God has for us. And today's sermon is titled, Jesus's Better Blessing. Our women's study on Hebrews on Thursday afternoons, Hebrews just goes over and over again. Jesus is infinitely better than, than the types that have pointed to what Jesus is. You don't want to miss what Jesus has for you in your life. Jesus is better blessing. Friday night, it's kind of a long Friday. I'd been out to, done some work here at church and done some other things on Friday morning. Then I went out to kill Michael to the National Cemetery there to be with Sandy Jackson and her family for the funeral for Sandy's dad. I always called him Hugh or Huey, she calls him Daddy, and I realized when I got out there, the local folks call him Elton. She said, yeah, well, everybody else calls him Hugh, but around here, the people called him Elton. So I was at that service out at the National Cemetery. I made my way back here to Starkville. I had some meetings late afternoon, and then kind of life with the pastor. Friday night, finally, I'm able to return to preparing my sermon for Sunday. So I'm going to work Friday night on my sermon. But in the midst of that, right as I'm getting started, looking at the slides and such uh, that were in draft form on the screen, I get a call at 525 Friday night. And it's from my good friend and our good brother, Justin Jarvis, telling me, hey, listen, Amanda came to pick up Jade, and she's smelling a gas leak over by the children's building, over by the Christian Education Building. And he said, she has an uncanny ability. You know the way one in a thousand people have some of these kind of gifts? She can smell gas when nobody else can. So he said, this happened in our house. I didn't smell a thing. She said she smelled gas. I didn't smell a thing. We called in, and it, it turned out we had a gas leak in the house. So he said, she's smelling something outside heading into the CE building. So I said, well, let's call Atmos. Let's get him out here. So Atmos Energy came. The guy gets here a little after 6. He's out, and sure enough, he detects with his equipment that we've got some kind of leak as you head into uh, the CE building over here around the side. And so then I'm, we're making phone calls. He says, the guy from Atmos says, look, you're going to need somebody commercial. I call my plumber, uh, one of the plumbers we use here at church, and he, he says, look, this is, this is over my head. You probably need uh, Brislin over in Columbus to come deal with this. There may be some excavation, because otherwise we're going to have to shut down all the gas. So I call Brislin. I leave a message. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, it's 620 on Friday night. This is not looking good heading into the Labor Day weekend, right? But 10 minutes later, I'm just overjoyed. I get this call back from a 662 number. It is, sure enough, the guy who's handling uh, the, the voicemail for Brislin over in Columbus calling me back. And I start telling him what's going on. Look, uh, we can shut down all the gas for all our buildings, but that's going to be bad because we got church on Sunday. You know, we like to do like fellowship cinnamon rolls and stuff. But then the big thing is, look, we've got... I've got uh, all kinds of children that come to our preschool. We want to have hot water for them. We want to be able to wash the, the blankets and the, 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 
you know, the dressings for the, the little babies at our preschool on Tuesday, we won't be able to feed them a hot lunch on Tuesday, Wednesday, if we don't get this thing fixed. And the guy says, now, wait a minute, are you a, are you a customer? I said, I don't know if I'm a customer. He said, well, my supervisor tells me I can't talk to anybody during off hours unless they're a customer. So the rule is I can't talk to you right now if you're not a customer. Do you have the app? Because you really ought to be doing this on the app. And I said, I don't have the app. I, you know, I don't know, you know. Look, I'm just, I need help. I need help. I'd really like to not shut down the gas in all my buildings. And he says, well, I can't really talk to you anymore because you're not a customer. I can't verify that you're a customer. I said, look, l- let me tell you this. I am a church, okay? I've got, like, lots of people, lots of buildings. I have children. I have adults. Look, I said, I've got a children's program with children that you're going to need help next week. Um, could you please call your supervisor and tell him, I will sign up to be a customer tonight. Tell me whatever I need to do. I will sign the contract. I, I need your help. And he said, okay, well, I'll try to get in touch with my supervisor. So he calls me back in 30 minutes. And he says, hey, look, my supervisor says, I cannot talk to you anymore. I shouldn't have talked to you in the first place. You're not a customer. I said, I got a crisis going on here. And, and he said, look, I, I said, I'm willing to be a customer. Tell me what I need to do. He said, well, you can call the office next week. Maybe call in on Monday. And uh, I said, you're probably going to be closed on Monday. It's Labor Day, right? And he said, yeah, you're right. He said, and actually, the woman who takes in customers, she only comes in on Thursday. But maybe you can become a customer on Thursday. But I can't talk to you anymore. So anyway, that was so we shut down the gas to all the buildings, and we're still trying to deal with that situation. All of this to say, children, teenagers, and adults, do not be a bureaucrat. What I just described is a classic bureaucratic buck passing, hey, it's not my problem, buck passing move. Don't be a bureaucrat. Don't be a buck passer. It's not, it's not my job. I only answer the phone. I don't care if people are dying in the street. I'm not going to walk out and help people dying in the street. It's not my job. I only sweep the right side of the building, not the left side. It's not my job. That's a bureaucrat. That's a buck passer. Don't be that. Also, don't be bowing to your smartphone so much that you never look out and see what God is placing before you in your life. Don't bow to your smartphone and miss life. Instead, be a blessed blessing giver. Be a blessed blessing giver. Now, you could say, well, wait a minute, Pastor Martin. When I read the sermon title, I thought this was going to be about a message about my being blessed. But are you talking about being a blessing giver or about being blessed? And the answer is yes. The two, it turns out, are inseparable. They're married. Being blessed is being a blessing giver. Being a blessing giver is being blessed. And today we're going to look to Jesus' better blessing. You do not want to miss the blessing that he has on offer to you. There's all kinds of people trying to sell you all kinds of thing, things in between football game, you know, television programs and stuff like this. Look, I'm telling you, Jesus is offering you a far better blessing, a lasting blessing than anything you're ever going to offer from this world. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, and then we'll also turn to where we are as we preach through Luke's gospel, Luke 11, 27 and 28. Hear now God's word. This is when the Lord calls a man named Avram to leave Haran and to go to a land that the Lord promises, I'm going to show you, you you don't know it yet, but I'm going to show it to you. Now the Lord said to Avram, go from your country and from your kindred, that means your family, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. 
and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then to where we are in Luke's gospel, as we preach through at Luke 11, picking up at verse 27. As he, this is Jesus, said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that gave you birth and the breast at which you nursed. He replied, Blessed rather are those hearing the word of God and keeping it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Amen. As we look today to Jesus' better blessing, let's first step back and remember the gospel big picture on blessing that runs all through the Bible. You can go back to Genesis chapters 1 through 3. You can go to Genesis 12 like we just did. You can read the rest of the Bible. It runs through all of it. Let's begin with this. God, who is God? God is the blessing giver who graciously creates and blesses by his word. If you go back to Genesis chapter 1, how does God create everything? By his word. He speaks his word and it comes about. How is God going to save you and give you eternal life? By his word. And who was there? Who is the word, in fact, in the story of Genesis 1? Like John's Gospel, chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Through him, through the word, all things are made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome the light. So, so God creates everything by his word, and God blesses by his word. In Genesis chapter 1, he not only creates, what does he do? He speaks blessing over it. Tov, good. And it was good. And then when he creates us in his own image, he doubles down on the blessing. Tov, tov. That's translated very good. It was very good when he created us in his image. So flowing out of this, we get to this part. So God creates graciously, and he blesses graciously. God creates us for blessing. And that's twofold. Here's our marriage here. The two always go together. Genesis 1 forward. God creates us for blessing on the one hand to be blessed, and then paired with that, guess what? To do what? We're made in his image. What are we supposed to do? He's the blessing giver. We're called to bless. We're called to give away blessings. He gives us blessing. We give blessing. We're blessed to be the blessing givers. Um, and here's essential. Just hold with this because this gets to Jesus' teaching. Hearing keeping and resting in God's word leads to life and blessing. Let me repeat that. Hearing and keeping, that means holding fast to and putting it into practice and resting in God's word, trusting in it, abiding in it, leads to life and ongoing blessing that never ends. So what is sin? Sin, this gets us to sin, sin equals rejecting God's word and God's blessing. 
What is sin? Sin is when I decide I'm going to make my own word. And I'm going to grab for myself my own blessings. I don't need to receive them from God. I don't want to receive them from God. I don't want to be dependent on God. I want to decide for myself. I want to speak my own truth. I'm going to follow my own truth. I'm going to follow my own heart and grab and hold on to my own blessings, the ones I want for myself. That's sin. You get that in the garden, right? Oh, let's go to the other side of this. What is salvation then? Salvation, well, we're back to the starting point, equals hearing and keeping and trusting in God's word. See, blessing and resting in God's word leads to eternal life. That's what Jesus came to give us. As Christians, we are Avram, Abraham's children. And what was Abraham called to do? To be blessed and to do what? Be a blessing. And through him, all the nations ultimately will be blessed because he is the source under this new covenant God is making with him to bring forth ultimately in this line, who? Jesus. Even the Gentiles can be saved. It's an awesome gospel. Now, let's start a conversation with our passage from Luke 11 today. But again, a little bit of background here. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the blessing giver. Let me just stop right there. You might say, but Pastor Martin, I thought you said God is the blessing giver. Is it God as the blessing giver or is it Jesus as the blessing giver? And guess what the answer is again? Yes. Jesus is God. He comes as the blessing giver on earth in the flesh. So Jesus is a blessing giver. He is the blessing giver. But listen to this. His beatitudes do not match the way we think in our flesh. His beatitudes don't match worldly values. Secular, on the one hand, or religious traditions. Nevertheless, I'm inviting you to believe this now. What Psalm 2.12 says is true. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Okay? Remember, like if you've studied the Bible, remember this. The Psalms start with two messianic Psalms, right? Psalm 1, blessed is the man, okay, who does not go the way of the wicked, right? But his... His trust is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. That's the first beatitude in the Psalms, right? Psalm 1-1, one, one, right? And then you go to the inclusio, okay, which is the end of Psalm 2. After we get all this messianic prophecy about God establishing his son as the eternal king, what does it say? It says, rulers, you better kiss the son and not reject him. And then it says, this is the close of Psalm 2, blessed, it's a key beatitude to the whole Bible, blessed is everyone who takes refuge in him, in the Son. I mean, that's the gospel. You already get the gospel right there. That's the key to the whole Bible and to your salvation. Okay, so, but, so what I'm telling you is two things. Your true blessing is going to come through the Son, but his blessings don't match up with the way we think, and even most religious conservative traditions think. Listen to some of his blessings. Here's some of his beatitudes. Blessed are you poor. What? Yes, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. But on the other hand, woe to you who are rich right now, because you're receiving your comfort here on earth, and you're not going to get it in eternity. Jesus also says this. This is another beatitude Jesus gives. Blessed are you who are full right now, fat and happy. Because your fullness is going to end when you die. And you're going to starve forever in eternity. But blessed are you who hunger now. For you will be filled. That's the way Jesus teaches. That's the way Jesus gives blessing. Jesus says this. Blessed are you when people hate you and exclude you and insult you. And you might be saying, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense because I'm a people pleaser and I want to fit in. Teenagers always want to fit in. I want to be in the in group. 
Adults do the same thing. I just kind of see big teenagers. I want to be in with the in-group at the country club. I want to be at the in-group with this or that group. I want to be at the in-group at that, you know, at, at Mississippi State or whatever. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Blessed are you when people hate you and exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. You come with me, Jesus says. You're not going to be popular all the time, but you'll be with me forever. And then he turns around and he says this, but woe to you when people speak well of you. Well, I thought that was the whole goal of life, to make everybody think I'm really cool, right? No, 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 Jesus says, if that's your, if that's your gospel, it's a false gospel. Woe to you when people speak well of you. And then we get to this one. The Apostle Paul places it as his key message as he is really preparing to go to die when he talks to the elders at the church in Ephesus. After talking about wolves coming into the church and all kinds of stuff like that, he says this. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus who said, this is in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, the world's not going to teach you that. The world's going to teach, oh, no, no, you've got to be crazy. It's a lot better to get than to give. So that's Jesus as the blessing giver. He's different. i got to be truth in advertising here. Jesus is different than the world. But you know what? Real life comes from him. Now, let's go to the woman. Kudos for this brave woman's First of all, support for Jesus publicly and her beatitude. In the face of, remember what's going on in this passage, in the larger passage of Luke 11? People are bad-mouthing Jesus. Some of the religious leaders are saying, well, he cast out demons because he's in league with Beelzebul, the prince of demons. And other people are saying, well, sure, he cast out that demon and that man who never was able to talk his whole life can suddenly talk, but show us something big, Jesus. Show us a sign from heaven. And it's obvious by this point, by the time you get to Luke 11, the religious authorities are against Jesus. So you would have to almost have a death wish to speak out publicly for Jesus at this point. And this is not a man who does it. Catch this. This is a woman in first century Palestine who's willing to go out on a limb and speak for Jesus. This is awesome bravery by this woman. She speaks publicly in the face of, the, look, all the authorities are against Jesus. They're getting ready to kill him, and you're going to speak out for him? Yes, she does. And then, and then beyond this, her beatitude is really actually pretty deep. It harmonizes with the first beatitude we read in the whole gospel story. It comes from a woman named Elizabeth, who is the mother of John, okay, John the Baptist. And let me remind you of what's going on in that, but there's two Beatitudes that I need to tell you about. Um, this woman, who's publicly proclaiming Jesus, says, Blessed is the womb that gave you birth and the breast at which you nursed. Now, let me just teach you a little bit on the way they talked back then. She's not really talking about the breast and the womb, okay? She's not idolizing the breast and the womb. This is what's called in literature a metonymy. It's like something that stands for something larger, okay? So she's saying, like, your mother is really blessed to have given you birth, number one. But number two, what the woman is saying is, I'm actually hailing you, Jesus. Your mom must be really proud in how blessed your mom is to have given birth to the Messiah. That's what the woman is actually saying, okay? You're the Messiah. Your mom was really blessed to give you birth. And the woman is hooking back, though, to earlier beatitude that we saw in the Bible, in Luke's gospel. You may remember, I made a big deal of this when we looked at Luke chapter 1. For 400 years, the Holy Spirit was silent and did not speak through prophets. For 400 years. And the first time we get the Holy Spirit bringing a message through a prophet is what? Through an unborn baby. You remember this? When Mary shows up, she's now pregnant with Jesus. She shows up to visit Elizabeth. Mary shows up, and the baby inside of Elizabeth leaps for joy because the Messiah is here. That's John the Baptist. 
That's the first time we get the Holy Spirit prophesying in 400 years. And then playing off of that, Elizabeth speaks her first beatitude. And she says this. You'll, you'll hear this. This sounds just like what the woman says in, in Luke 11. She says, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Now that's Luke 142. And that links all the way back to Genesis 3.15. I mean, it's deep stuff. But the second beatitude is infinitely higher. Do you remember the second beatitude Elizabeth gives? It's in Luke 145. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. She says, Blessed is she who believed that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. In other words, the real blessing is hearing and keeping the word, exactly what Jesus says. And so Mary is not simply the womb who gives birth to Jesus. She's the woman who becomes a believing disciple. That's where the real blessing is. Which brings us to, finally, Jesus' better blessing. Jesus responds to this woman who's so excited about him, and he says, blessed rather are those hearing and keeping the word of God. Hearing and keeping the word of God. Now let me apply this for us. This means that faith and being a follower of Jesus is not about our family of flesh. It's not about our family of flesh. And it's not about our past. In other words, the end game is not your present family. The end game is your future family with Jesus, your new kingdom family and future. This response of Jesus, this beatitude, this beatitude connects with what happened earlier in his ministry. We read about this in Luke chapter 8, for instance. Jesus is teaching his mother and his brothers show up. Mark tells us that they thought Jesus was crazy and he needed to tamp down his ministry. That's why they're there. And so Jesus is teaching, and some people come in and say, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside. You better interrupt your teaching and go out and see them. And you remember how Jesus responds? This is in Luke 8, 21. My mother and my brothers are those who, guess what? Who are hearing and doing the word of God. That's who my real family is, Jesus says. Those who actually hear and put into practice the word of God. So this brings us to this application. Being a Christian is not about being a fan. It's not even about hollering out about how great Jesus is. It's about actually being on his team, actually acting in his ministry. Jesus says, whoever is not with me is against me, and listen to this, whoever does not gather with me scatters. Luke 11, 23. He's not looking for fans. He's looking for people to join his mission team. And that's where the real future is. That's where real salvation is. That's where the kingdom is. And Jesus says this, look, you don't do this on your own. Ask for the Holy Spirit, and my Father will give you the Holy Spirit. You don't have this in yourself, but I will give you the power if you ask for it. And it's an awesome thing that God allows us all these opportunities to be blessed by being a blessing giver. You know, when Phil called me this morning, when I went over to see him and when I prayed with him and I was just looking at that empty now stripped bed that Wanda has been on all summer down, you know, in their family room downstairs. I thought about back just four weeks ago when it was the eve of Wanda's 75th birthday. I said, Wanda, you want me to come over and see you today or tomorrow on your birthday? And she said, won't you come over tonight because, um, you know, we're going to be having family calls and all kinds of stuff for my birthday. So I came over, spent some time with Wanda, and prayed with her. And then I said, Wanda, what do you want for your birthday? And she said, she lit up and she said, I'd really like a birthday cake for my birthday. I mean, she, wasn't, she hadn't been eating anything for a while, much. And she wanted a birthday cake. I said, we're going to get you a birthday cake, Wanda. I told Phil, we'll get you a birthday cake. And thanks to Nancy for helping me out on that. So, you know, Sunday, uh, that morning, Sunday morning, I, I take this birthday cake over to them. 
And I, I told Phil, I said, I want a picture of Wanda with her birthday cake, celebrating her birthday. And she had told me, she said, I'll get all made up. I'll put on makeup and everything for this birthday cake. I said, I want a picture of that. You know, that's, if we go to, that, that's Wanda on her 75th birthday. Probably the last time she got herself together and put on makeup for her life. And that's all because, you know, God just gives us these opportunities. I'm a scrub team member. I'm a third or fourth team member. Some of you guys are starting members of this team. But, you know, who, who pick up on opportunities to be blessed by being a blessing giver. And that's really what life is about. This is what real life is about in Christ with God. And, you know, you don't forget those blessings. Those blessings last forever. And Wanda's now home with the Lord. But you know what? She got to celebrate and look up with some joy on her 75th. Jesus says this, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our home with him, with you, if you'll open yourself to this blessing, to this blessed life with him. Don't miss any of the riches he has for you in your life. Don't run through this life running in your own understanding. Look to him. He'll open the door. Love him. Hear and keep his word. And know the joy of being blessed by being a blessing giver. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. We hope you enjoyed this sermon from First Presbyterian Church in Starkville, Mississippi. If you want to find out more about our church and our ministries, please visit fpcstarkville.org. If you'd like someone to reach out to you, and uh, maybe grab coffee or lunch to get to know us a little bit better, you can go to fpcstarkville.org slash connect and fill out the form there. And if you like what you're doing and want to see more, uh, go to fpcstarkville.org slash give to give.